Tim? Can you hear me? I can hear you every once in a while. Okay. May it come out and come back in and see what happens. All right. Let's let's um let's do that. Yeah, come out and come back in, just see if that clears the line or whatever. Sometimes that works. So um, I remember when I started my business, my first client far away was in Puerto Rico. And um, I was so concerned that working online would be, wouldn't work, you know, like we need to be present in each other's personal space, you know, but um, working with her was amazing. And also it taught me that there are going to be tech challenges. <laughs> so when there are tech challenges, we don't, you know, you can, you can stress about it all you want, but it's not going to help. So having that, you know, presence of mind to not let the tech bother you when it does go in or out is just something that is a part of life. And um, especially in our virtual world in the past year and a half where we've relied so much on tech. I was recently at, in a conference where I had to be on camera the entire time for hours and hours. And I thought I'd take myself to this beautiful condo over on Lake Michigan. Whenever a big boat went by on the channel, their GPS messed up my Zoom. So, so their GPS signals were just having all this trouble, um, causing me a lot of trouble. So it happens and we'll just see if Tim can get back in here, keeping an eye out for him. And until he does, I'll just share a little bit more about pressure free and the three steps of this method I created. So um, basically my mission was to help people perform at a high level without the stress hormones destroying them mentally and physically. And so as I delved into creating my method, I, I like to use a lot of alliteration and keep things very simple for people. So I have three simple steps and here comes Tim. Hopefully this will work. My steps are targets, triggers, and tools. And if Tim comes in here okay, we will pass this to him. Looks like he's joining. And then when we wrap up, I'll share what targets, triggers, tools means. So I can leave you with a little pressure free. Are you here, Tim? Trying. <laughs> All right, I'll keep going until. There we go. Can you yeah. hear me now? You can, I no. can hear you. Yeah. Hey, Al. Yes. Can you hear us? Can you hear me? All right, I have tried every angle in this house and I am not getting a connection. I don't think it's my wireless, I think it's just my service provider going up and down. Okay. So I apologize. I'm going to try to keep going, but Go ahead. Um, I think we're going to keep on experiencing this. Yeah, you're out again. You're out I again. apologize, folks. I wish I had a different world right now because you guys have been up and I've been listening to you all day and I cannot see anybody and everybody's just a static image. Okay. Tim, we yeah. can hear you loud and clear, however. Yeah. You can. I'll tell you what, I'm going to take my video offline. Maybe that'll make a difference. I am okay. not sure. Again, I, I'm, I should have a perfectly clear internet. I've had it all day. So um, now that, yeah, I got to take the stress and the pressure off of uh, the situation. Yeah, when we talk about the, the essence of leadership, um, if you guys, yeah, you guys are blank again. I, I'm going to really be... You're there, Al. I see. I kind of see you moving once in a while. All right, I'm Al. I'm gonna. I'm gonna apologize. I, I don't want to distract this outstanding conference that you guys have had going. Okay. Um, I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna cut out. And if you want, I can record something for you guys later. But you're you're bumping yeah. up and down. I just don't know why. That's no problem. This is just not normal right now for my and, internet service here. Yeah, I'll reach out to you, Tim. Yeah, and, I'm out again. I'm I, I'm completely out. I can't, I can't see anybody or hear anybody. Okay, no problem. Bye. <laughs> okay, so we'll close out. I will share. Um, what I'm going to do is connect to Tim and I will do uh, an interview with him so you can learn from him and I'll make sure that recording gets out to everybody. So um, 
So I'll go back to targets, triggers, tools, and just close out today with just a little bit about what pressure-free is about. So I, I call this the pressure-free method. And what I mean by that is no matter what pressures or challenges or stressors come your way, you don't have to release the fight or flight stress response. Most of us are overreacting today. We're not actually under physical attack, but we're so conditioned to trigger the stress response for the most minor of things, for like the sound of the acorns on my skylights, <laughs> or tech not working as Tim just experienced, or anytime we're asked to speak or do something out of our comfort zone. So I've taught for years, young athletes and, and my violin students, my viola students, how to perform well on stage and not be overcome by performance anxiety so they can bring their best performance forward. So targets, triggers, tools. Um, targets are basically why you want to do what you want to do. They come in two, uh, usually three forms. So some people have performance targets. They wanna take their business to a new level. They wanna get a promotion at work. They want to um, be better as an athlete, whatever those performing things are. Um, they just wanna do their day in a better way. And some people have really clear health reasons why they need to stop releasing these stress hormones. So stress is called the silent killer. It's really not stress, it's the release of the stress hormones that's doing the damage to us. And the damage is profound. It affects every cell of your body when you go into fight or flight. It shuts down a lot of your body processes, which makes it different, difficult for your nutrients to get out to your cells, causing you to have all sorts of issues. So, um, so health reasons, um, certainly if you have a predisposition genetically for something, it's wonderful when you can keep your body and mind healthy so you don't have conditions happen to you as may have happened to your parents or grandparents. Um, I've helped so many of my clients um, stay in remission from various diseases or go into remission for something they've had for decades. So health has been really interesting. And even young people, I had a 10 year old who had severe allergies. He's a very, very smart little academician. And um, his allergies and his asthma, his throat would close. And it was also stress induced throat closing. So test taking, et cetera. And um, I'll never forget, we were on the last session of our coaching together and I was recapping some of the things we had done. And I said, so tell me, how are your allergies these days? And he gets this huge smile on his face and he looks at his mother who's in the room with him and he goes, I don't have allergies anymore, <laughs> like that. So all those things that, that really affect us, if you have allergies or a chronic condition, it's wearing at your nervous system all the time. So when you're finally free of that, you can really step into your true potential. And when you're not so worried about illness, I knock on wood because I used to catch everything my three boys brought home from school as far as cold, flus, et cetera. And when I created the pressure-free method, in eight weeks, my body changed so much and my immune system gained so much that in, in this past decade, I have in the last five years, I haven't been ill at all for any reason. And so it's wonderful to watch the human body work efficiently and effectively. Then relationships. So people come to me to upgrade their relationships and, and open their hearts and get rid of some of these, these long-standing, um, deep-rooted issues that are blocking them from really experiencing love and connection um, and having a beautiful life. I really stand for people having a beautiful life. I, I say that. and. People know me for that. Um, I used to say the word beautiful way too much. In fact, my brother-in-law, when he first met me, made a lot of fun of me because he took, they took me to like Michigan for the first time and they went, oh, it's beautiful. Like that. <laughs> I just can't help it. I just find beauty in so many things. So I stand for people having a beautiful life. I also stand for the fact that I think our mental health system is broken. We're putting some of our best minds on medications that have such long-term and horrific side effects and um, I really stand for that. So, um, so targets, triggers, tools, figuring out why you want to stop releasing these stress hormones. And as Vivian says, like you can, she can see through us. Um, one of my friends said, you're such a fine tuned classical musician. He goes, I think you hear people. 
if you actually hear their vibrations, which helps me figure them out, which is kind of interesting to me. Um, but I'm also looking for the physical tensions. Is it in the shoulders? Is it in the forehead? Where is, you know, where is the tension being held? In one of my clients once, it was in the, his toes were curled up inside his dress shoes. Wasn't anywhere up here. Like he seemed totally cool. And I looked down at his feet and they were bulging in the shoes. And I go, are your toes curled up in there? <laughs> so we tend to hold tension somewhere. And that can be a clue as to the fact that something's going on for you. So once you've identified your targets, to me, that's your fuel. And I go through a strategy session to really figure out what are some of those targets for you, those big dreams, those things that you feel could really be possible if you didn't have all this stress or didn't have all this anxiety or anger or whatever it is that's blocking you. The second, um, the second step are identifying your triggers. Um, I was using that word before it became popular. I kind of want to switch it now because you will even hear young people say, oh, he triggered me like that. And it drives me crazy <laughs> because no one can trigger you. Only you can allow yourself to be triggered. But you'll hear a lot of young people today say, oh, she triggers me or he triggers me. No, no, no. It's like, you got to start to take some responsibility for the fact that you are allowing yourself to release fight or flight. So triggers, um, the easy way that I teach people to notice them are notice whatever makes you feel annoyed or angry, anxious or afraid, and anytime you feel ashamed. So those are what I call the A emotions that can cause you to go into fight or flight. When we go into fight or flight, it's of course fight, flight, some people freeze, some people's response is to actually tell a little lie and fib. And some people's response is to fawn or over flatter because you're so afraid that you're not being noticed or not gonna be included in the group and you wanna be a part of the tribe. So we'll move into those Fs, but then we also exhibit what I call the B behaviors. Excuse my French here, but bitchy is the first one. <laughs> we get very snippy, we get short with people. We're not our best selves when we go into fight or flight, typically. That's when we say things and do things we later regret. Some people actually bully others. And we're talking about leaders here and I'm raising my hand. I know there's been times in my leadership where I've been extremely bossy, verging on bullying. I had a, I had a mission and my mission was so strong. <laughs> and if others weren't quite with me, <laughs> I went into it. <laughs> so. Um, and definitely if I triggered fight or flight, I'm not aware of what's actually even coming out of my mouth. I'm just trying to get that job done or put that fire out or whatever it is that caused me to trigger in the first place. Some people feel very broken. I've had clients say to me recently, especially clients who've been doing a lot of marijuana because it's becoming legalized so many places um, that have said to me, I feel like my brain is broken. Like it's I wake up fatigued. I think this is going to put me to sleep. I wake up fatigued and I'm not functioning very well. Um, and some people simply feel like there's been so much stress and pressure in their lives that it's, they've just crumbled. And they've in the burnout, of course, is another word that comes in. Some people binge. <laughs> I had an executive who kept a little stash of very high-end chocolate in her drawer. So she was a chocolate binger. Um, I worked with an Irish company and they all go drinking after work. So, you know, people have got their things, their comfort foods, their comfort drinks. Um, and sometimes because we don't have willpower when we go into fight or flight, we shut down our ability to have willpower. You can't stop at one. You're going into some addictive behavior because you don't have that willpower to stop. Um, and then some people are blamey. They finger point and blame other people. <laughs> So it's her fault that I don't have my degree yet, or it's the kid's fault that I haven't gotten that done yet today, or whatever it is. We, we get very finger pointing when we're in fight or flight. So uh, triggers are noticing what makes you feel those emotions or what makes your body start to feel tense. And if you can notice it, you have about a 10 second window before all the mechanisms in your brain, your amygdala and all the other parts that tell your heart rate to rise up, that tell your adrenal glands to release the first flood of hormones, which are 
catecholamines, I like to call them a cocktail. Adrenaline is one of the big ones that make you mobilize fat and glucose so you can fight or run away. So when that happens, when you've triggered the fight or flight stress response, you basically are not your best self. And if you're a leader, people see that. And that's why people, as Winner said, hate their bosses. If they could see their boss in a pressure-free mode, they probably wouldn't hate them. They couldn't hate them. But once we've gone into fight or flight, and most people trigger very first thing in the morning. A lot of the leaders here today have talked about what you do first thing in the morning because that sets up your day. But most people wake up and they're hitting the snooze button and they're annoyed because they hate their alarm anyway. Maybe it's on their phone. They hate the sound of it. So they've triggered the stress response before they've even gotten out of bed. When I was honest with myself and was figuring this all out, I mapped, I, I triggered 20 times just trying to get my family ready for school. <laughs> it was a snowy day, wet boots, Everything was wet and we had to go to school because we'd been playing in the snow the night before. Like it was just a, a, a cluster, you know, like all these things. And I just kept triggering and triggering and triggering. So then I get to work. Am I my best self? No, I'm not my best self. So it's fascinating to un untangle all the little triggers. At 11 years into using pressure free method on myself, I'm still discovering little triggers that I didn't realize. The acorns really opened up for me how sounds, small sounds, can cause me to trigger fight or flight. I really like pristine, very quiet environment, just what I do best work in. So, um, so sounds, sense, anything sensory, how a fabric feels on your skin, all kinds of little things like that can be a trigger. Then we move into tools. With this 10 second solution, this 10 second window, if you can start to become really aware of the emotions that are causing you to trigger fight or flight, you have up to 10 seconds from a resting heart rate to interrupt the stress response. So I help people stop stress at the source. So the adrenal glands don't release the first flood. There are two floods of hormones, by the way, it takes me about an hour to describe it all, but the first, if we can stop the first flood, the second flood doesn't go out. And one of the side effects of the second flood of hormones is it can make you feel anxious for no reason and also cause insomnia. Those are two things that a lot of my clients come to me and say, you know, sometimes I just feel worried and I don't know why. Like, I should be fine here. What's wrong with me? I had a 14-year-old girl say to me um, when I taught her this, so you mean I'm not crazy? Like the hormones, the biology is causing her to feel a certain way. That set her free. In fact, of all of the hundreds of clients I've worked with, she broke the stress cycle in two and a half weeks. The fastest I've ever had a client actually break it and have a whole day where they didn't trigger the stress response at all. What that means is when you sleep at night, your body is actually repairing, rejuvenating. So when you wake up the next morning, you're not fatigued. You're totally ready to do your day. In fact, Hugh, um, I think he's left. I, I don't know if he's still here, but he started getting up earlier and earlier. He's a senior in high school. Most teenagers want to sleep till noon. And he was getting up earlier and earlier and earlier, the more pressure-free we were becoming. And I still remember one morning, I'm downstairs making breakfast like 5 a.m. He comes in and he goes, I just feel so calm and exhilarated. What is that? <laughs> like, that is life, right? <laughs> that is life. That is how life was meant to be lived. And so unlocking the stress cycle, I basically have built over 40 different tools that I teach my clients because everyone is unique. For some people, relaxing the abs is not enough <laughs> to stop the release of the stress response. It's very helpful because it does trick your brain to think, oh, I, I don't need to trigger fight or flight here. But for some people, they need some really deeper tools, especially if they've had deep trauma and who has not had something traumatic happen in their life that can still be reeling up in them? So I've built over 40 ways to help people break the stress cycle so they literally can go that whole day. Hugh, I see you just popped on there. I didn't talk at a school, did I? <laughs> no, yeah, no, I heard it. I had to run in the bathroom real quick. But yeah, yep, earlier and earlier. I've, I've balanced it out now. It's, uh, it's 6 a.m. That's my sweet spot. Mm -hmm. 
It's cool for me. I actually thought um, I had mono when I was in high school. So I thought I needed a, like almost 10 hours of sleep every night. I was so afraid I would get sick again. So for years I, I lived under that and pressure free set me free because now, I mean, I can do some pretty amazing work for hours and hours. I'm not tired. I'm not tired. I've got people on the Pacific coast I coach. So we're going later into the night and I could have, I would have been so messed up about trying to do that before. So targets, triggers, tools, simple little thing to remember. You just start to become aware of what your triggers are. And, um, and the tools we, we shared today, we're relaxing the abs. A smile, if the corners of the lips go up, you actually release dopamine. It's a neurotransmitter required for your outer brain to work, your hippocampus also, and your, your cortex and your lobes. If you can smile in time, you will be able to think and respond totally differently to how you would if you triggered fight or flight. So that means you just change the trajectory of what your day is gonna be like, but not just your day, but your life. And as one of my clients said, she was a business owner and artist and she saved sea turtles, really amazing woman. She goes, you helped me change the trajectory on every area of my life. It was all going downhill. And to have it start to move this way, even if it's just incremental, makes such a huge difference. So I'm just really grateful. We're gonna close out. It's incredible for everyone to have been here. For those of you watching this on the replay, if you've come all the way to the end, then I'm sure you've seen all the different themes weave through today. Presence, we started with presence and over and over again, speakers brought that forward. We started also with integrity and humility and, and we're, we come to the end and Werner brings that forward again. So it's really been phenomenal to bring so many different kinds of leaders together and yet have the same themes coming through with each person. So I'm very grateful for you all. Um, I will make sure that you all get this recording and every and those watching the recorder got it. But also what I'm gonna do this time is go through it and time it. So if you wanna come back to a certain person that maybe you didn't get to hear or you want to hear again, I'm gonna take the time to actually go through all that and get the times there for, for each speaker this time. Um, this is the second time I've done a conference like this. So um, I appreciate you and um, I, I really have enjoyed hosting you all and um, making this happen today. So thanks everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I'm you so much. Now. Thank you so much. So grateful. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Laurel. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Sheila, thank you. Melanie, wow, it was great. Thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, Werner, thank you for those words. Thank you so much. Hashi, thank you. I'm noticing nobody wants to leave. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Laurel, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for putting this together. I'm so glad I could come on. I'm looking forward to the recordings. Oh my and gosh. I, I love you and I'm grateful for the speakers for showing up today and I'm very happy to be I here. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. And I will leave now, but I have enjoyed every moment. Thank you. Bye. Bye.